Hey guys, and welcome to the last episode of FH Nerd ATV of this school year. We have a great lineup of videos for you this month, including the history behind a soda shop on Main Street and an inspiring story about fitness. We also take a look at a church expanding, a girl who adds permanent artwork to her wall, and we go to Creepcore Park to see what's going on there. We hope you enjoy the show. Let's get started. Up to the plate first, we have a story on Little O's, a soda shop down on Main Street. It's been open for quite a while now and is booming with business. I'm sure with summer kicking in, people are going to be going there all the time for soda and ice cream. Let's check out this video on the soda shop and its unique interior. Well, Little O's is um, it's an old-fashioned, full-working antique soda fountain. Uh, we make everything from hand every single day, including our gooey butter cakes, made the same way for over 50 years using the same secret family recipe. Um, we hand make all of our sodas, we hand make all of our milkshakes. Uh, we make our milkshakes one by one, so you always get an individual milkshake. The way that they came about the name is um, the owners are Brent and Christy Ozankowski. This is technically Christy's shop. Um, Brent is always known as Big O by his friends and everything like that, and so Christy, his wife, is now Little O, so that's how Little O's came to be. They decided to keep it family owned just because um, it meant something to them, um, especially with the, again, with the gooey butter cake. It's, that has only been passed down through the males of the Ozenkowski family. What makes Little O's different is all of our machinery and a lot of stuff that we have in here is all vintage. Like our um, milkshake machine, that's from the 1940s. The goosenecks that we use for our sodas are from the 1920s. Uh, our bar in the back, it's, um, that was from the 1920s as well as the candy, uh, the candy cases. I just think that it's nice the way that like everything is so old fashioned and you can come in and like look at all the different candies and stuff like that. Well, I actually remember coming in here before I was manager or before I started working here. I came in here and all like a lot of the Coke products that you see on the walls and everything like that weren't here. A lot of the decorations weren't here. It was actually kind of it wasn't necessarily boring. The the wall colors definitely made it interesting, but it was definitely, you know, it was quieter. There wasn't that many people here. Um, a lot of people didn't know what it was, and now over the three years that we've been open, we've gotten more you know, memorabilia, we've gotten more popular with people, and so we have little unique um, items to the actual shop. And that I'm next. Okay, let's just do that once an episode okay. and get back to the real script. Okay. So, if I go to that soda shop a few more times, I could be gaining some weight. You got any ideas on how I could slim down? Um, don't be lazy. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Um, I can't think of anything, but I know a guy named Andy Ingle does. He's been working out for the past six months on trying to stay fit and healthy. He was inspired by one of his friends and now is inspiring others. Oh, maybe I can learn some things from this video. Let's see what Andy has to say. Andy Ingle, a middle-aged software specialist, is making life-changing choices by eating healthy and exercising. Well, it's been a struggle for many years just trying to get on top of it. I've got a job where I sit behind a desk all the time, so I finally just had to decide it was time to do something. I tried and tried, but the biggest thing was probably making myself accountable to others, helping other people encourage each other. Something that's unique, it even surprised my doctor, was to find out that I'm not doing any kind of a fad diet. I'm just simply keeping track of my calories and making sure that I eat less than I use. But the other piece is exercise. Just find a plan that's not too aggressive, that you can, you can stick with. And then the biggest thing is stick to it. Find other people that are gonna keep an eye on you and make sure that you're sticking with it. And uh, don't expect too much of yourself. Uh, start easy and just grow from there. Now having seen that, um, that the changes that he's, he has made, and, and so many changes, and, and he's come so far, um, that I may have played a, a, a part in that. It's, it's a great feeling. Well, I always tell Andy, it looks like he could use a cheeseburger. He has dropped some serious pounds. Several months ago, I weighed about 230 pounds, and now I'm down to about 167. People don't realize uh, what an unhealthy lifestyle does. Um, it costs a lot of money as far as food. It makes you feel bad in ways that you don't even realize. You don't sleep well, you've got the weight carrying around, your clothes don't fit right, it puts you in a bad mood. And he took me out to lunch, showed me how to order something good, because, you know, I'm a hamburgers and onion rings kind of guy. 
But he's like, try a grilled chicken. I've never had grilled chicken from a restaurant in my life. But he showed me and he told me about Pepper being my best friend. And uh, so he's helped me all along. Being healthy and, and, and your level of fitness and, and the things that you do to, to achieve those, um, you know, it's contagious. The biggest thing that encourages me to lose weight is uh, being a dad, making sure that I can be around for uh, my son and my family and uh, hopefully helping them do the same thing. And then every once in a while he sends me these, they're kind of cheesy little quotes about keep going and all that stuff like that, but it kind of works too. So Andy, way to go. You're a life changer, dude. Come on, Sam, you can do it. You can do it. Woo. You did it. That lifestyle video sure has inspired me to work out. Ooh, it looks like you lost some pounds there. Yes, I have. <laughs> Anyways, have you seen that tent building along the highway? Uh, I don't recall seeing any tent along any highway. Well, it's a building where Harvester Christian Church holds their services, and right now there are some cool changes coming. Oh, the onion looking thing. Yeah, they're building a new building right now, and let's see how far they're coming along. We've had a temporary building uh, that's lasted 12 years, so much longer than the life that normally was there. So there's a rule of thumb in the church world that says once you're 80% full, uh, new visitors start to feel like there's no seats available, and we've hit that mark. The newest project that we have uh, and that we're in the middle of right now is a new worship center. Uh, we are building a 1,300 seat sanctuary. We are 120 days from being open. One of the things that we really wanted to accomplish when we were starting the new building was we had several kind of front doors and we really wanted to limit that. And so the way we did that was we kind of pulled it close to the building and we, now we have basically two entrances, a north and a south side. One of the things when you walk in that south entrance is that you see two main pieces that we wanted to focus on. It's this big open air lobby and we've got our baptistry that's there. Uh, it's 10 feet across, it's huge, big cross. And then there's a second piece that's really a focal point of these four pillars that'll highlight kind of our four E's. And those two pieces you'll see along with this grand staircase that you walk up. You walk in and uh, it's, it's stadium style seating with a sloped floor. So we're excited that um, we get an opportunity to basically create more space for visitors to come. We look at that ministry building as a tool uh, not just to have a brand new shiny kind of toy, uh, but rather have more space for people to come uh, to find and follow Jesus. You know, I'm feeling a bit artsy right now. I could create something cool and big like that building we just saw. I don't think you could create a building, but speaking of art, have you heard of Teresa? No, I haven't. What about her? She's actually been taking on the task of painting a mural in her bedroom. Oh, that sounds cool. Let's check it out. I've always liked to draw ever since I was little. In preschool, I remember I used to draw with my friends and just have fun with it. What I have behind me is a mural that I painted and I really enjoyed doing it. And I went to paint the rest of my walls and try to match the mural. When she painted her wall, it was a really good and creative idea. It's not something that many people ever do, so it was really original for her to do. I didn't like my wall color, so I wanted to add something cool to my room so I wanted to paint a mural on it because my sister suggested it and it's a stopwatch like from Alice in Wonderland with the rabbit and everything and I really like it. Whenever Teresa's having a bad day she draws or <laughs> does something with art and then it improves her mood and helps her concentrate. Art has influenced my life by giving me a way to escape reality whenever I'm having a hard time. The thing that inspires my art is my friends because I have a lot of art friends that like to draw in their sketchbooks and everything and they always give me new ideas of what I can draw. Her art isn't something that everyone can do. It's very realistic and it's what makes her unique. Sun's out and guns are out. I mean, no. sun's out and the students are out and they're at Creepcore Park. Creepcore Park is actually a popular place right now for students. I'm sure with the summer coming up, it's going to be even more packed than it is right now. Let's check this video out and see what people are doing in Creepcore these days. Oh, I've been coming to Creepcore Park ever since I was a little kid coming here with my dad and, you know, 
going for walks or fishing or whatever else, I think I've definitely seen an increase just in all aspects of the population, but definitely teenagers as well, yeah. There's so much more to this park than just the path that everybody walks. And there's a lot of cool things, like this forest. We just adventure into this forest. And if you actually like push through the forest and climb hills and get off the path, you'll find a whole nother meaning in Kareev Court. That's all we have for this episode. See the link in the description to see a thank you video that we created for our advisors. I'm Sam. And I'm Autumn. Stay cooler than the other side of my pill, FHN. For the last time, see you later. Bye! See ya! Come back next year! Boom! Check it out! But speaking about speaking about art, oh my gosh! Art. Art. Artsy! Artsy? First up, first up, first up, first up, and then a story on Little O soda shit. Who? All you have to say is that I'm Autumn. Okay, that's. I don't think I can mess that one. <laughs>